And for the second week in a row, Jake Browning looks amazing. I mean, Jake Browning played incredible. And all of a sudden, with Cincinnati's backup quarterback, who's playing out of his mind, many people expected this not to happen. Is this a playoff team? Damn right. Yeah. 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 The Bengals aim to continue their win streak as they look to defend the jungle against a foe from the NFC. Welcome in to Bengals Weekly. I'm Marissa Contepelli. With four weeks to go in the regular season, the Bengals have to finish strong if they want to secure a playoff spot come January. But this week, they'll welcome in a Minnesota team who's in a similar boat in the NFC. So as we get you set for kickoff between the Vikings and the Bengals, we hand the mic over to B.J. Hill, who was mic'd up last Sunday and never disappoints to entertain. We'll also go behind the stripes with Chase Brown, as the rookie has exploded onto the scene over the past two weeks. We'll welcome in NFL Network's Chris Rose to preview this big interconference matchup. And on Countdown, I'll tell you how dominant the Bengals' defensive line has played as a unit this season. But first... The Bengals were rolling offensively, made game-changing special teams plays, played a shutout second half on defense, and left Paycor Stadium with a crucial win. So it kind of goes without saying that the Bengals were clicking on all cylinders. Let's relive the Bengals' win over the Colts. It is a chilly December day here in Cincinnati. In other words, football weather. It's a great day to be great, man. We'll go with opportunity today. Into back to throw. Forced to move up in the pocket. Hendrickson buries him. Let it go! Here comes Jake Browning. Really looked comfortable in the short passing game against the Jaguars. They fake it to him. Now they screen it to him. All sorts of running room. The speedster. He's got daylight. Inside the 30. One man to beat. Oh, he makes a move into the end zone. Touchdown, Bengals. There you go, fellas. Great job. Yeah, yeah. Great f-ing job. Pressure's coming. Passes. Incomplete. Dax Hill was all over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a handoff. Mixon stumbling forward. Touchdown. Bengals. At halftime, we walked in here. They had all the momentum. Okay? We played a heck of a first half those last two minutes. They took the momentum for us. 14-point swing. What did you do in the second half? You walked out. You dominated them in every single phase. Here's T. Higgins, middle of the field. He's got a first down and more. And now Mixon trying to get to the edge. Mixon does get to the edge, but he stumbles inside the 20. Browning has the ball. He's back to throw. He fires. Caught at the five. Tanner Hudson into the end zone. Touchdown, Bengals. Ah! Let's go! Let's go! Bengals showing blitz late. Minshew. Trying to get Pittman incomplete. Pittman was covered up by Ouzie. Here comes the punt by Robbins. Very, very high. And we've got a muff. The Bengals fall on top of it at the 13-yard line. Hey, somebody notice my man Ivy League. Because not everybody can get in. Ah. Minshew back to throw. Looking left. Hit from behind by Hendrickson. And the Bengals have it. Two weeks ago, after a loss dropped their record to five and six, many people gave up the Cincinnati Bengals for dead. Well, guess what? You can hear a noise in the background. Thump, 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 thump. The heartbeat very much still beating. So we just gotta keep stacking it. We got another six day week. You just went through that rhythm last week. It's gonna be the same this week, okay? 
Couple game balls. Coming up next, we check in with the man on the mic. We had B.J. Hill mic'd up against the Colts when we return. Bengals Weekly is brought to you by Alta Fiber. Proud to be the official internet provider of the Cincinnati Bengals. Paycor, proud to be the official HR software provider of the Cincinnati Bengals. And Kettering Health, the official healthcare provider of the Cincinnati Bengals. One of the most entertaining members on this Bengals team is none other than B.J. Hill. And Hill never seems to disappoint when he's in the spotlight. And for your enjoyment and ours, we had the interception diving defensive lineman on the mic against the Colts. Ah! Let's go! And it is time for the pigskin to fly here in the jungle. Come on, man. Oh! Fast and physical. Come on. Come on. Come on, B. Come on. Let's go to work. This will be a 38 yard field goal. Are you seven? Yo! Hold. And it's uh, no good! Oh my! He's nervous. Browning dumps it off underneath. He's got a chase for it. He's the speedster. He's got daylight inside the 30. One man to beat. Oh, he makes a move into the end zone. Yeah! Yeah! That's what I'm talking about. Good job, fellas. That's what we're doing. I got something for you right here. Ooh, yes. Ooh. Come on now! You already know what time it is! Hey, you know all that extra junk don't work, right? 75, doom, doom. I'm about to go crazy. One that gets five. Oh. Thank you. I'm just playing, I'm just playing, y'all. Relax. <laughs> That's crazy. Hey, let me get through. Hey, five, six. <laughs> you got lucky. I'm telling you. Second down and six. Mitchell, he's hit from behind. The Bengals actually picked that one off. It's B.J. Hill. The ball was in the air, and B.J. Hill came in to scoop it. Ah! Let's go! Hey! Let's get it. Hey! Hey! I'm tired now. You got hands? Yo, of course. Got? And you can see the athleticism from a guy who weighs 300 plus pounds. <laughs> yeah, oh, put me on offense. I gotta be on offense now. Yeah, like I'm new to that, man. Good job. Hey, good game, bro. Hey, good game. Yeah. Hey, I gotta be on good hands. I gotta be on there. You feel me? Like some got to change. Cincinnati Bengals, that's the team we're gonna cheer to victory. Chase Brown made heads turn during his 54-yard touchdown run last week, where he reached a top speed of over 22 miles per hour, making him the second fastest ball carrier in the NFL this season. Now that play has opened the eyes of many across the country as to the talent and potential that the rookie has. That's what has helped me throughout my entire career is just using adversity as a thing to you know, launch myself forward instead of a looking at it as like more of a setback. I think, um, you know, Chase, obviously the first thing that jumps off the tape is his speed. Brown with speed and he's the speedster. He's got daylight. My speed, my vision, my burst, and when there's space and there's a play to be made, you know, I'm, I'm gonna make that play. I'm gonna make that one person miss and try and create as many explosive plays as I can. He's a guy that's not really worried about what he's asked to do. He's gonna give you 100%. That's what we were attracted to about him in the process when we were evaluating him, and it's good to see that pay off. All 
I try and look at the, the positive things of adversity. Like with my hamstring this year, I had to be in early for rehab. So I kind of saw it as a way like, hey, like if I'm in earlier, I can get in the playbook earlier. Having this extra time to, to get ahead and watch as much film as I could, prepare as if I was playing. When I came back, I was ready to go. Against Jacksonville, I had an explosive play that went for like 31 but I didn't feel like I opened up all the way. I'm like, okay, like the next time I get space, get up to speed as fast as you can and just use that to my advantage. Here is a rookie chase. Brown! He breaks into the secondary. Wow, wow, what a good burst. He gives it to the rookie from Illinois. He's off to the races. I think just the design of the play initially, calling that just exactly off of a motion that we had last week that Chase had two explosive runs off of. You kind of see the defense react uh, and run out of there. And then as soon as you saw Chase with the ball in his hands, you knew we had a chance. Caught the ball, I turned around, and it was nothing but space. So I'm like, you know, I got to turn on the Jets. All sorts of running room. He's flying to the 30. As I was getting close to the end zone, I'm like, man, there's always going to be that one person that gets in your way to prevent that touchdown. I haven't had this much space since, like, high school. So I'm going to try and make a miss. Cuts back, makes a man miss. Kind of flew right past, and... Flew in through the end zone. I'm like, man, I, this does not feel real. It's kind of a surreal moment. Touchdown, Bengals! It's kind of your story, right? Like, yeah, I mean, makes sense. No, I mean, uh, it would be cool if it came easy, but um, nothing, nothing comes easy in life. You, you, you always got to work for it. He's got the potential to be a really good all-around back. Good to see him just kind of get better as the as the season progresses. First career NFL <laughs> touchdown by Chase Brown. Hey! Whenever an opportunity comes, just making the most of it and just taking it one day at a time. When we return, we set our sights on the Vikings and preview what the Bengals will need to do to make it three in a row. Game preview is next here on Bengals Weekly. Welcome back to Bengals Weekly. This week's game is part of a triple header being broadcast on NFL Network as the Bengals and Vikings both enter fighting for playoff positioning. Chris Rose will be on the call as he now joins Dan Horde to give us his preview. He is the host of NFL Game Day Highlights every Sunday on the NFL Network, and this Saturday he will do play-by-play -play of the Bengals-Vikings game. It is great to visit with Chris Rose. Chris, we are always interested in getting the national perspective of the Cincinnati Bengals. Have you been wowed by what Jake Browning has done over the past couple of weeks? Absolutely, Dan. I don't, I don't think there's a question about it. We were all watching that Ravens-Bengals game, and when Joe Burrow couldn't throw the ball on the sidelines, we were like, okay, we'll see the Bengals in 2024. Well, I guess jokes on everybody else because the Bengals are playing great football. They're actually a very healthy team. And I think they're one of those teams, you know, there's, it only feels like 20 teams in the AFC are at seven and six. And the <laughs> Bengals are one of them. So Jake Browning can keep doing what he's doing. I have a feeling based on Cincinnati's pedigree over the last couple of years that it might be the Bengals that you do not want to face come mid-January. So I'm sure as you have prepped to do play-by-play -play this week, you've learned a lot of things about the Bengals beyond the stars that maybe you didn't know from doing the highlights every Sunday. What stands out to you as you've learned more about this team? Well, I mean, listen, I knew that they were really young in the secondary, but DJ Turner has done a, a really nice job. Jordan Battle has now become a starter, so it feels like They've got their secondary for years to come. Chase Brown has added just a different element now that he's touched the ball the last two weeks. And then last week, it looks like he was freaking shot out of a cannon. I mean, I have no idea. We all watched that screenplay early on. We we're like, what the heck just happened there? He just looked so much faster than everybody else. I was like, they got to get the ball to that guy. And so I expect more of that to happen this weekend. So with those things in mind, give us a couple of keys to the Bengals getting out of Paycor Stadium on Saturday with a win. Well, last week, uh, I talked to a good friend of mine who, who uh, actually works for the Bengals. He reminded me that the Bengals did not give up a sack for the first time in their last 43 games. So if you do that against Daniil Hunter and crew, a good deal. Although Jake Browning's been great against blitzes. I just noticed his numbers. He's completing two thirds of his passes and has put up some pretty gaudy numbers, but you want to make it so that he's not getting a lot of pressure in his face. I would use Chase Brown a ton. 
I'm a big fan of that kid. I know I like shiny new toys, but I think he's not just a different gear. He's like a different sports car that's been hanging out in the garage with the, you know, the canvas over it for two months. And I think it's going to be really fun to see between Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson, which one of those two former great LSU teammates has the better day, because you better believe they both want to shine and outshine the other. Chris, this has been fun. Look forward to having you back in town on Saturday. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Dan. When we return, it's time for Contapelli's Countdown, where I'll tell you just how good Jake Browning has been against the Blitz. Stay with us here on Bengals Weekly. Bengals Weekly is brought to you by Betfred, the official sports betting partner of the Cincinnati Bengals, and your local Kia dealers. Visit kia.com to discover movement that inspires. Swift Foods, inspiring extraordinary meals this tailgating season. That fire in your belly? Yeah, it's for meat. Find your spark. Load up on Swift Meats at your local grocer today. Hubbard, Hill, Hendrickson, Reader. Four names that don't nearly get the recognition they deserve, but together have formed one of the most lethal defensive lines in football. They've been a catalyst for Lou Anarumo's squad and the crew has only ramped up their play as the season's progressed. Trey Hendrickson's ability to get after the quarterback has been documented by his 13 and a half sacks. That's tied for third most in the league. His 17.8 QB pressure rate is fourth highest in the NFL as his 0.69 second pass rush get off rate is the second quickest in the league. Sam Hubbard has generated 28 run stops this season, which is tied for seventh most among edge players. DJ Reader is the team's second highest PFF defender with an 82 on the season, and BJ Hill's 14 generated pressures while double team this season is tied for seventh most in the league. Now Hill may have joked that he should be on offense after showing off his good hands with his first regular season INT. That brought the Bengals total to 13 interceptions, tied for fourth most in the league, and it's the most that they have had in a season since 2016. Of the defense's 21 takeaways on the year, 14 have come in the second half. That's tied for third most in the league. Well, DJ Turner has continued to rise since taking on a starting role in week five. The rookie has been targeted on 14% of his coverage snaps this season. That's fourth lowest among all corners. Turner has forced a tight window on just over 33% of his targets this season, and that is tied for fourth best among all corners through 14 weeks. On the other side of the ball, Jake Browning has had the Bengals offense rolling, and since Browning stepped into the starting lineup, he's ranked in the top five in numerous quarterback categories, including completion percentage, passing yards per game, and passer rating, as his passer rating is the second highest among quarterbacks since week 13. Minnesota blitzes a league high 46% on dropbacks, but that's where Browning has shined. Against the blitz, Browning has over a 128 passer rating with three touchdowns, zero interceptions, and is averaging almost nine yards per attempt. And with the Vikings coming to town, the Bengals hold the all-time edge in Cincinnati, having won the last four in the Queen City and seven of eight all-time. This includes the 2021 home opener when Jamar Chase debuted the gritty in stripes and Evan McPherson hit his first of many game winners. The Vikings have been stingy against the run this season, but Joe Mixon enters this week having posted 100 or more scrimmage yards in three of his last four and has found the end zone in six of his last seven games as the Bengals look to continue their eight-game win streak against the NFC. Contapelli's Countdown is presented by Betfred. And don't forget to download the Betfred app for your chance to win Bengals suite tickets and take advantage of exclusive offers. The Bengals and Beth Fred remind you to gamble responsibly. It's now time for this week's Kettering Health Fantasy Report. Joe Mixon once again topped 100 scrimmage yards on his way to a 21.5 fantasy outing in week 14 after rushing the ball 21 times for 79 yards to go with three receptions for 46 yards. Jodine found himself sixth among all fantasy backs for the week as Mixon has posted 20 or more fantasy points in three of the last four games. Jake Browning put together another solid fantasy outing, topping 23 points after completing 18 of 24 
for 275 yards, Browning was the fourth scoring quarterback in Week 14. And for Minnesota, TJ Hawkinson enters this week as the number two scoring fantasy tight end on the season, averaging over 15 points per outing. Hawkinson has posted 839 receiving yards and five touchdowns, but has been held to under 60 receiving yards in each of his last three games. Thanks for tuning in to Bengals Weekly. Kickoff between the Vikings and the Bengals is coming up. For Dan Horde and our entire crew, I'm Marissa Contepelli. We'll see you next week. Bengals Weekly is brought to you by Ulta Fiber. Proud to be the official internet provider of the Cincinnati Bengals. Paycor, proud to be the official HR software provider of the Cincinnati Bengals. And Kettering Health, the official healthcare provider of the Cincinnati Bengals.